S49 candidates. Number four, if I recall, that's going to be towards the rear driver's side of the vehicle. I'd have to refer to my sketch. Well, if we look at S24, is that a refer to my sketch? Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
foot, yeah, 13, 13 foot three, 13 eight, yes. And we'll use driver's side. And lastly, looking at S53 in evidence, is there a shell casing visible on that photograph, sir? Yes, that shell casing was observed to be uh, on the, what I consider the roof area of the vehicle driver's side, right behind the uh, antenna of the vehicle. And did you call it that? Yes, that was marked with the flag. I'll show you S68. Describe for the drill that's contained in that envelope. It's going to be one shell casing I described as uh, being head stamped federal uh, 40 SW, placard number 5, roof of the car, uh, 14 foot 10 inches, 14 foot 5 inches. Okay. Now, all the shell casings that you observed, were they on the driver's side of the vehicle or uh, in, right behind the vehicle? Correct, driver's side or the rear of the vehicle. Did you locate any shell casings on the passenger side of the vehicle? No, sir, I did not. Now, did you continue to document the scene after uh, the tarp was removed from the victim? Yes, sir. And did you photograph the condition of the victim's body as you observed it on location? Yes, uh, photographs were uh, completed during the examination of the uh, victim uh, by the medical examiner's office. I want to show you if we mark S13. I'm going to ask you if you recognize what's depicted in that photograph and what the purpose of that photograph was. Um, this photograph is uh, showing you a uh, what we believe to be a, a suspected projectile. Can you point out that it's a suspected projectile? Right there. By that cone, this is where the victim is at. Okay. That's the victim's hip and belt? Yes, sir. And did you collect that item after uh, you observed it in that location and photographed it? Yes. We'll just show you what's been marked. Uh, yes. And what is it? This was one bullet, uh, I'm sorry, one projectile slash bullet specimen, placard two near victim's body, uh, placard two is a cone that was collected. Uh, measurement on that was probably 10 foot, 2 inches, 14 foot, 4 inches. Okay. I'll show you S69. The tarps were removed and the uh, medical examiner was inspecting the victim's body. Did you notice any signs of injuries to the victim's back? Uh, yes. And what type of injury did you observe? Uh, it appeared he had a uh, gunshot wound to towards his um, back of his body. I'll show you S69 in evidence. That's good to recognize that yes, photograph. Uh, suspected gunshot wound is right here, left side of his uh, back area of the body. And that would be consistent with the side of the body that's facing the driver's side window? Yes, sir. Did you also have an opportunity to observe the victim's hands at the time of uh, the tar being removed? Yeah, it appeared that the victim had what I uh, described as uh, uh, defects in his hands, meaning there were wounds observed on his hands. Okay. And which hand in particular do you recall? On his left hand. I want to show you S70 evidence. Do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph, sir? Yes, sir. What is that? Uh, these are the defects that I uh, spoke about previously. Uh, here, the finger, uh, and here as well. Uh, right around that, I guess, is thumb or wrist area. You also notice uh, defects in his, the sleeve of his clothing. Yes. When you observe those defects, were you able to determine what caused those defects? Uh, those defects were caused by uh, suspected gunshot wounds. And how do you know they were uh, caused by suspected gunshots? We're looking for the, uh, the holes of the bullet uh, or the projectile, as well as any type of ballistic evidence. Okay, did you find projectiles and ballistic evidence in the sleeve of this jacket? Yes, we did. I'll show you S71 evidence. What's depicted in that photograph? That's a suspected uh, bullet or projectile that's located uh, in the sleeve of this jacket uh, during the examination by the medical examiner's office. Now, after you observed that uh, item, did you collect it? Yes, sir. And again, you're taking the same steps to prevent contamination? Yes, sir. 
I want to show you what's been marked S77 and ask you if you recognize what's in that, or what is contained in that envelope. Uh, this envelope contains what I described as one projectile slash bullet specimen located near the jacket of victim near Elro. And is that what's visible in that photograph? Yes, sir. It's kind of hard to see, but um, this is his hand down here, and that, that would be his elbow area. And that's the projectile you collect? Yes, sir. S72 in evidence. What was the purpose of that photograph, sir? Uh, this photograph is to uh, show you what uh, I described as suspected, two suspected projectiles uh, located in the shirt area. Can you point them out, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, one here and one here. And then S73. Uh, that would be a close up view of what you just saw before. Once again, suspected projectiles here and here. Okay. After you observed those projectiles in those locations, did you collect them? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what the mark S75 and S76. I'm going to see if you recognize what's contained in each envelope, beginning with S75. Okay. Um, S75 is what I uh, described as one projectile located in the left wrist area sleeve a jacket victim was wearing. And you collected that and it's in the same, substantially the same condition? Yes, it is. And how about 76? 76 would be one projectile slash bullet specimen located in the left jacket sleeve of the victim. I call it midway between the wrist and the elbow. And where would that be located on that photograph? It's going to be... Uh, or is the other photograph? The other photograph would be that, sir. Pretty much. That's 72 on the screen. This one. And the other projectile that we just talked about would be the one that's further up in the photograph? Yes, sir. Now, in addition to the immediate crime scene around the car and the intersection, did you also search the surrounding area? Yes, sir. As part of that search, did you search the abandoned house that was located at 137? Uh, 137, 139? Yeah. Yes, uh, that was search. And did you photograph that search? Yes, sir. Beginning with one, oh, I'm sorry, S79 in evidence. Is that a uh, photograph of the front of 137, 139? Yes, that's a photograph taken a little later during the investigation as the sun uh, was coming up. I would estimate that. Photographs by taken after six a.m. Okay, and you entered those residences. Uh, this uh, residence, I weren't able to enter, uh, but we were able to search it. Was boarded up, uh, and then there was a attached shed behind it. Where would 141 be in relation to this photograph? Uh, if I may. Yes. 141 is right over here, sir. Now that's 80. Is that the shed that you're talking about? Yes, sir. It is. So you were able to search that location? Yes. And when you searched that location, did you find anything? Yes. There's a, a bag in that shed right now. Showing you S81. Is the bag that you're speaking of depicted in that photograph? Yes, sir. The bag would be uh, right here. And did you subsequently open up that bag? Yes, sir. And when you opened up that bag, what, if anything, did you find? Uh, that bag contained a firearm which, if I recall, was a 9mm high point semi-automatic. I think the model number was C9. Did you yeah. recover that uh, item? Yes. Uh, it was noted to be uh, rusty, uh, with some signs of oxidation on it. There was also a magazine with it as well. Okay. Yeah, it indicated that it was rusted and had oxidation on it. Did that indicate to you whether or not it had recently been fired? It appeared to me it had not been fired recently at all due to the rust and the oxidation uh, of the weapon and the condition of the weapon too. Even though it appeared not to have been fired, you collected it anyway? Yes, sir. It did. And why did you do that? To uh, do a thorough search of the area for uh, items of evidence. I'm going to show you. Beginning with S82 evidence. 
What's the picture of that photograph? Um, that's going to be a photo of the weapon I just spoke about previously, this high point nine millimeter uh, with the magazine in it. Is the bag to the right, this yes, beige bag, is that the bag to the right? Yes, that was the bag, and then also, if I remember correctly, it was a, a sock that these rounds as well. Yeah. Sure, you guys take a three. Yeah, I'll take a three. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this is the weapon. This is the magazine you saw previously removed from the, uh, the well weapon uh, with uh, some bullets that also had signs of rust and oxidation. Now, are those signs of rust and oxidation visible in S84? Yes, sir, they are. Can you point them out? Yes. Uh, right here, you can see that's a heavy rust pattern. Uh, and there's some oxidation there. Uh, if you go back to the previous picture, you can see the rust and oxidation on that magazine as well. Uh, would be right here. It's kind of hard to see. And that would indicate to you that it has not been fired recently? Yes, sir. And why is that? It's just been, uh, you can uh, see that it has not been fired recently. Uh, if it had been fired recently, you would see a little bit more action to it, and that rust and oxidation looks like it's been sitting there for some time. And did you clear that weapon? And the weapon was uh, made safe and clear, is the terminology we use, meaning the slides brought back. You check the well weapon, check the barrel, check the magazine, make sure there's no round. And when you did that, is that what you're indicating that it didn't slide easily? Correct. It looked like it's been sitting for a while. Sure, you guys say fine. Is that the weapon after you made it clear? Yes, this is a Same. weapon with the slide back. Um, that I can't recall. I don't even know if I could lock the weapon back, uh, lock the slide back on it. And is that because it had been sitting for a while with the rust on the station? Yes, sir. Even though it was in that condition, you collected it? Yes, sir. Let me show you S86 for identification. Ask you if you recognize what this box contains. Can I open it up, sir? Yes, sir, I can recognize this. And what is it? It is the uh, high point firearm model C9 9mm Luger that is located. In that shit area. Now, was that Luger as well as all of the shell casings that you recovered and the projectiles that you recovered eventually sent to the State Police Ballistics Lab? Yes, sir. And was that done in April of 2007? Yes, uh, I believe April 18th, something like that. I don't remember the exact date. Okay. And what's the purpose of sending it to the New Jersey State Police Lab? Uh, for this weapon, uh, it was requested to be examined for what's considered operability. Uh, also, uh, NIBIN, and also comparison to the shell casings that we located. So you wanted to compare it to the shell casings that were found all around that car? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, after that comparison is made, I wouldn't ask you about the comparison, because you didn't do the comparison. That's right. Okay. After that comparison is made, is the Brunswick County Prosecutor's Office notified to come pick up the evidence? Yes, sir. And was that done? Yes, sir. And is that why we have them here today? Yes, sir. As part of your investigation in this case, was an autop did you attend the autopsy of Shaquille Williams? Yes, sir. I attended that autopsy uh, next day, approximately 10.30 a.m. and started throwing the uh, The autopsy was performed by Dr. Ian Wood, the medical examiner. And that was done on March 22nd, 2017? Yes, sir. And why do you attend the autopsy? Uh, we attend the autopsy to uh, document uh, photographs to collect any evidence during the course of that post-mortem autopsy examination. And did you photograph the injury that was depicted uh, to <coughs> kill Williams or put the bars to kill Williams? Yes, sir. Okay. Screen for present time. Um, I'm going to show you S87 and S88. Ask if you recognize those photographs. Uh, yes, sir. And what are these? These are uh, photographs of the victim's left hand wrist area showing the uh, defects we spoke about previously that are observed on it. And there are any depiction of the injuries to his left hand? Yes, they are. I'm showing you S89. Uh, this photograph is showing you uh, what I consider a uh, suspected gunshot wounds uh, on the left arm area of the victim. Uh, 
is considered a bicep or whatever. Uh, also, uh, left cheek area of his face, and there's also suspected gunshot wounds on his, uh, I guess you would call that his left uh, flank or left undercarriage area. Showing your S90. Let's pick it up. Um, S90 is a, a photograph of uh, the victim's left arm, also showing you a suspected projectile coming out of uh, what I consider the uh, upper left arm bicep area. Showing you S91 and S92. Uh, these two pictures are a overall and close-up of the suspected projectile that's observed in his left uh, upper arm area. Then with regard to 93 and 94. Uh, 90, I'm sorry, S93, S94. Um, 93 would be what's uh, considered an overall picture of his left back area uh, showing suspected gunshot wound. And then um, S94 is a close up of that one. And then S96. S96 is uh, an overall photograph of a uh, suspected gunshot wound and a projectile in his right underarm area. And S97. Uh, S97 photograph of the right, uh, right would consider his right shoulder blade area, uh, showing you a suspected projectile as well. Yeah, the, the photographs that are depicting uh, projectiles within it, after you took those photographs and the injuries were pointed out to you, did you collect those projectiles? Yes, sir. They were uh, collected uh, utilizing uh, change gloves and putting them into the uh, and specifically, I'm going to show you some of the photos on the screen that depict the photograph or the, uh, the projectiles. <coughs> for the nature of these photographs, but with regard to S91, can you point out the projectile that's visible in that photograph? Yes, um, and this picture here, the projectile is here, they call the upper right, I'm sorry, upper left arm area uh, of the victim. Okay. And you collected that projectile? Yes, sir. It was more S95. S, did you recognize that? Yes, I did. Well, what is that, sir? What I described as a bullet specimen recovered from the upper left arm area of the victim uh, at the front of the town 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 of the Let's have a recovery from the right shoulder. Yes, sir. Go to multiple. Uh, yes, if I do recall. Yes. Or fragments. <coughs> Yes. Um, this is what I describe as 
one bullet specimen recovered from the lateral right shoulder area of the victim. BCME of Dr. Lurie. Okay. So does that indicate the doctor who turned that bullet over to you? Yes, it does. And that's an accurate uh, picture. Nothing's changed about that bullet. No, no sir. And was the bullet recovered from the posterior right armpit? Yes, sir. Should I show you what's been more S102? Uh, this is uh, what I described as a bullet specimen suspected 380. Uh, posterior right armpit, uh, basically back of the right armpit. BCMEO, Dr. Hood. This S97 is that the bullet that was recovered from that location. That's one hundred. Is that the bullet that we removed from the right shoulder? Yes, this is from the right shoulder. So that's that bullet? Yes. I'm sorry, it's a bit of confusion. Um, now, we're looking at S96. S-114? Yes, S-114 is uh, bullet fragments located, I'm uh, sorry, recovered from the left forearm. Did you recover other bullets, fragments of bullets from the interior? Well, let me ask you this. During the course of the autopsy procedure, did Dr. Hood conduct an internal examination of Shaquille Williams' body? Yes, he did. Uh, yeah. During the course of this examination, he conducted x-rays and when he conducted that interior examination, did he recover uh, projectiles? Yes, sir. And when he recovered those projectiles, uh, did he then turn them over to you? Yes, sir. Let me show you what's been marked S104 and ask if you recognize this letter. Sorry, 106. Ask if you recognize that number 106. Uh, yes. So what is it? This is going to be one bullet specimen recovered from the right chest area, uh, lateral right pectoral muscle of the victim suspected 3 BCMEO BCMEL doctor. And that was recovered internally? Uh, yes. Now, I want to show you what's the mark 109, S109. Do you recognize what that is? Uh, yes, this is going to be one bullet specimen located in the anterior uh, right rib, the second rib of the victim BCMEO doctor. I want to show you just a lot S111 as if you recognize that. Uh, yeah, this is going to be what uh, I call bullet specimens, suspected from 40 caliber from the right underarm area of the victim, uh, front of the right arm. Now, a while ago we talked about the bulge to the right side of the victim's neck. Yes, sir. Did uh, 
was that area explored during the examination of the old house? And was anything recovered as a result of that examination? Yes, there was a uh, suspected projectile recovery. Yeah. Um, this is what I described as a bullet specimens recovered from the right neck area of the victim, ECMEO, Dr. And those are the bullet fragments from the neck? Yes, sir. Now, after or during the course of the autopsy procedure, was the uh, clothing removed from the body of Shaquille Williams? Yes, it was. And when the clothing was removed from the body of Shaquille Williams, did you uh, find different uh, projectiles? Yes. And when you found those projectiles, did you uh, take custody of those? Yes. S110, do you recognize that? Yeah, this is uh, what I described as a bone and projectile fragment located uh, in the jacket uh, of the victim. And that was recovered uh, during the course of the autopsy? Yes, sir. S113. Um, this is what I described as a bullet fragment uh, collected from the left arm of the victim. During the course of the post-mortem examination, they were all recovered on 3 Yes, sir. Now we, we touched on some of these, but I want to go through some photographs so you can actually see them. S103. That's the projectile located where? That's from the scene. Uh, it's located left of this area, uh, sleeve of the uh, jacket that we're trying to wear. It was notated that those uh, projectiles had uh, what I considered little pieces of Right here, um, part of the uh, projectile. That's part of the projectile itself? Yes, sir. And looking at S98. Um, this is going to be the, uh, the bullet uh, specimen recovered from the right uh, lateral uh, shoulder. S99. Is that a close up of that bullet? Yes, sir. And what would cause that hollow area in the bullet? That's what uh, I'm not a firearms expert by any means, but uh, that's what they call, uh, I believe, referred to as an exposed base. And S101 is the photograph I was looking for before. I was at this place. Yes. Is that the bullet that was removed from the interior of the okay. Yes, sir. And S104? It's going to be uh, the bullet that's the uh, bullet specimen that's recovered from the right chest area, uh, lateral right pectoral muscle. Okay. And that's the one that was recovered from the interior of the body? I believe so. It's suspected of 300, uh, 380 uh, projectile. And does that also have that blue plastic contained in the projectile itself? Uh, yes, it's kind of hard to see. If I could just look at the picture. Yes, sir. Yes. And again, that's part of the round itself. That's right here. Uh, kind of hard to see this blue background from the uh, bag of metal goes down as well. That's the blue reflection. Um, that's just it. Okay, that's Is that a better? Better view of it. Uh, once again, you can see this blue plastic um, we were speaking about earlier. Now, S107, uh, the fragments removed from the bulge of the neck. Yes. Are those the fragments we're talking about? Yes, these are what I uh, described as uh, bullet specimens recovered from the right neck area of the victim. Uh, bullet specimens here, you can also see the uh, blue colored plastic and the other specimens in that neck area. In addition to all the ballistic evidence that you recovered from the body of the victim and the clothing of the victim, did you also search the pants pockets of the victim? Yes, sir, I did. A pair of, if I remember, the dental styles, uh, hands or jeans, and, uh, they were searched. And when you searched those items, did you find any? I found, uh, if I recall, uh, wax folds stamped on uh, cast on, on I believe there was three of them. Would that be consistent with the use of narcotics? Yes, sir. I'm going to share this with Mark S74 and ask you if you recognize this. You can tell me if you start to do that. I mean, you're on the yeah.
glass globes uh, stamped uh, at some. Is that, uh, from your experience in law enforcement, consistent with Hackett's uh, power? Yes, sir. You were found in the pants pocket? Yes, sir. Judge, at this point, I don't have any further questions. Please, uh, Marjorie. I think it's an appropriate time to take our active break. I'm going to be in 15 minutes for a break and not discuss any uh, aspect of uh, testimony. And uh, we'll get you in about 15 minutes. Um, the technical can step down off the stand and not discuss the substance of the testimony with anyone. Counsel, thank you. All right, just arrive when you're ready. Thank you. Good afternoon, Sergeant. How are you? Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good to see you again. Um, a couple quick questions and then mercifully we'll be done. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. With regard to the location of the casings that you mentioned, it's fair to say that virtually all of them were on the driver's side of the vehicle. Fair? Yes, sir. Okay. From that, can we conclude that the two individuals shooting were on the driver's side and neither one was on the passenger side? I didn't see anything to indicate that any shots were from the passenger side. So. Okay. And you would agree with me by the, the nature of those casings, you were able to determine that they basically came in two forms. The three caliber, right? Yes, sir. And the three eighty. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, specifically, I believe nine forty caliber and four three eighty. Right. Adds up to thirteen. Yes, sir. Okay. You okay. can agree on that. Yes. All right. Uh, we can also agree, I believe, that there were two shooters. The uh, shell casings would indicate that, sir. So if the witness came in and told us there were three shooters, that would not be correct, would it? It's possible, sir, maybe there was two three caliber guns involved. That's not your conclusion. The conclusion is that there were two. There's two different uh, shell cases, 40 caliber and 3 Okay. Now, <clears throat> the weapon that you found in the, the back, the old rusted gun that was found in the back, there's nothing that links that particular gun to Mr. Lewis, is there? Not that I'm aware of, sir. Neither the, the, the gun itself or the magazine is inside of the gun, right? Not that I'm aware of, sir. Okay. But you were checking it out and you were looking into that, right? I was, uh, it was sent up to the, to the lab for examination, sir. Yeah, and the reason why, because they wanted to see if there was some nexus to the shooting. That's correct, sir. And maybe to Mr. Lewis. Or whoever. Whoever, sir. The bottom line is it doesn't come back, to, nothing about it comes back to Mr. Lewis, correct? Not to my knowledge, sir. Judge, thank you very much. Mr. Mangos, do you have any additional questions for this one? Yes. All right. Uh, this is your time to for today. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have one as far as we're going to go for today. I'm going to give you your uh, my instructions and then your.